but nobody heard me. Police say Kenyo admitted to eating parts of Kojo's body, specifically the heart and parts of the brain. It's 2011 in Maryland, United States, and there's a Kenyan family of four living there. Alexander Kenyo, a 21-year-old engineering student at Morgan State University. Anthony Kenyo, his father, who is also a professor at the same school, his mother and his brother. Beginning of 2011, Alex began behaving in a very weird manner. You're weird, buddy. You're weird. He believed he was a prophet with secret powers. He even wrote a manuscript about the history of mankind. Some of the stories that featured in his writings were the reptilian theory, African slaves, and the Bermuda Triangle. At one point, he quit school and church and developed his own spiritual beliefs. Dude, like, oh my god, like, can we talk about, like, the political and economic state of the world right now? He referred to himself as shaman. And a shaman is a kind of weird individual. Slowly, he started bringing dead animals, which he would use to do bizarre rituals. One of the many stories that deeply affected Alex was the 1998 Kenya embassy bombing, the 9-11 terrorist attack and the hurricane Katrina that killed over 1800 people. This left the paranoid Alex worried for his family. I'm scared dad! Do you trust me son? In December of 2011, Alex believed a group of people had sabotaged his computer records and had conspired to get him drunk, causing him to miss a football game. Smoking with anger, he punched holes in an office which led to his dismissal from the college program. I'm sorry, you're fired. Get out of here. What I do? As times passed, he became more and more creepier. He was walking around the campus half naked with a samurai sword and talking about human sacrifices. I don't want peace. I want problems always. At around 2012, Cody, a 37-year-old Ghanaian citizen, came to live with Alex's family for some time. On May 19th of 2012, Joshua Caesar was visiting campus for a friend's graduation. As he was walking through the front door of the dormitory that Alex had been sharing with Joshua's friends, Alex appeared out of nowhere and struck him with a baseball bat wrapped with a barbed wire and chains. The attack cracked Joshua's head, fractured his skull and shattered his left eye socket which left him unconscious. Alex then dragged Joshua into a back room, pulled out a knife, and he was ready to cut him open before people intervened, forcing him to run. The attack left Joshua blind in one eye. I, I, I can't see! I can't see! I can't see! Alex was arrested. A few days later, Alex was out on a bail. One early morning, Cody left for a morning jog wearing a t-shirt and shorts. That was the last time that Cody was ever seen. On May of 25th, the police received a call from Alex's father that Cody, the man they were living with, is missing. Alex took to Facebook to write a cryptic message. Are you strong enough to endure a ritual of mass human sacrifices around the country and still be able to function as human beings? This is the brutal basis and evil and terrifying method of these death cults. Six days later, on May 31st, as Alex's brother was in the basement laundry room, he came across two tins covered by a blanket. When he opened the blanket, what he saw sent chills down his spine and he immediately called the police. 911, what's your emergency? When the police responded to the call, they found a truly horrifying scene. Hey, why are you screaming like a goddamn little girl? 
Sarge! Look! Sweet Jesus! The two teens in the basement had Cody's head and two human hands. In the words of a family friend, he was slaughtered in the most brutal, inhumane fashion. At the height of confusion and panic, Alex admitted to have asked Cody while he was asleep before eating his heart and part of his brain. With the police thinking that he is making the stories up, Alex told the detectives where to find the rest of the body at the parking lot of the town Baptist Church and true to his words, the police found the remaining body parts of Cody. And though it's impossible to understand why he killed Cody, maybe there's a hidden explanation on why he ate his organ. My theory is that it has to do with his manuscript. Remember where I pointed out that some of the things that fascinated him was the reptilian theory, African slaves and Bermuda Triangle. My interest is particularly in reptilian theories. Hove, England, 2008. In the middle of the night, 20-year-old Charmaine de Rosario Sage is sleeping in bed when she awakens to a frightening sight, a reptilian humanoid staring down at her. Around 12 million people in the United States believed reptilians ruled the country. They stood around me in a circle. Each one of them put one hand on my body. And Reptilians or lizard people are believed to be blood drinking, flesh eating and shape shifting aliens who resemble human beings. So do you think it's a coincidence that a man who was fascinated about shape shifting aliens that ate people ate someone? Alex was awaiting a death penalty. However, things took a turn when Judge Stephen Waldron declared that Alex was not criminally responsible for the murder of Cody. The reason for the verdict was because the court believed Alex acted because of mental illness. A psychiatric assessment determined that Alex was suffering from a mental condition called paranoid schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is one of the most common mental disorders diagnosed among serial killers. In the 70s, David Richard, or son of Sam, killed six people and his defense was that his neighbor's dog that was possessed by a demon had told him to do it. And if you find that bizarre, wait till you hear about Richard Chase, the man who drank blood of six people. And that is nothing compared to Daniel Gonzalez, who compared killing to orgasm. What is even more perplexing is that Daniel got the inspiration from watching a Fred Kruger movie. All these serial killers were diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. The court of verdict did not settle well with the victim's side. A friend of the deceased said, Someone acting with such care to conceal evidence and demonstrating the capacity to cover his tracks so competently does not appear to be experiencing a mental deficiency. And although Alex seems to have gotten away with the murder, he is not the first to have such a ruling. On 10th of February, Alexander Lewis Ranwell hacked another man with a hammer to death. Three hours later, Lewis had struck again, this time two elderly brothers who he beat to death with a spade. At 5 am on 11th February, he carried out a violent but non fatal attack. Lewis was eventually arrested. Lewis stood at trial for murder but was found not guilty because the court believed he was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia. 